Hey everyone, welcome to another Sensory Percussion Ableton Live tutorial where we're going to be talking about my go-to device for creating mappings from Sensory Percussion controllers to stuff in live. And here it is, Expression Control. If you've been following along with me in my journey, you've probably seen me do quite a few different things. I'm always tinkering with workflows and stuff, but Expression Control has a lot going for it that I'm really stoked on. This is a device that offers a really nice workflow for mapping controllers, you know, these knobs that we would create and then be, put some kind of controller on. Mapping those controllers to some parameters in live, such as any of these knobs on the synthesizer. Making these kind of connections is, in my opinion, pretty pivotal to making sensory percussion an expressive experience. So having something that makes that as easy as possible is really, is really great. And that's what expression and control is all about. I got an acoustic setup here. I have a sensor on the kick, snare, and then I have a mesh, mesh tom here. Literally just a couple samples. Got a tom here, and then on the rim, ooh, yeah. Some nice looping random length from an LFO. That's fun. Yeah, I think those are the only sounds I have coming from sensory percussion. In order to take this setup a little bit further, I'm sending MIDI out of the kick just one note here, C1. I could actually get rid of all these for clarity. Sending C1 out here and receiving it on this channel here to play this bass synth. I'm a big proponent of this and I do it very often because playing an instrument, generating the sound in real time, allows you to change fundamental things about the sound because it's happening right now. And you can do quite a lot with samples as well, but it's just a different workflow. A logical next step that I would often go for at this point is deciding what controllers I want to use from sensory percussion to control things about this synthesizer. We're going to start off without even using a controller because velocity is built in to expression control as one of the input options. This is the velocity of the MIDI message coming out of sensory percussion. And it looks reasonably accurate as we would hope. And the, the workflow to make the connection is as simple as clicking this map button and then clicking something else. So let's just have it map to that one knob I was messing with. Nice. Now we're using velocity to control the timbre of the synthesizer. Very cool. If you're not happy with the velocity response of the MIDI coming out of sensory percussion, I, if you're working in live already, I love to just use this velocity MIDI effect. Something I found with my own playing is that the soft settings don't I tend to not be quite soft enough. So what you can do is just use this drive knob and take it down and that makes it more exponential. It gives me a little more resolution in these lower values. Another strength of expression control over other Max for Life devices that I've used for this kind of thing is that you can create multiple mappings, six, is that six? Yeah, it's six. You can create up to six mappings with one device. So since we're just rocking that velocity life, let's use velocity to control something else like the attack time on the synth. And I'm using the really cool looping behavior. And let's invert that so we can adjust the maximum and minimum here. So when I play hard, we get that we're pushing this knob up, which adds brightness to the sound, but pulling the attack time down 
which makes a sharper envelope to get that snappy looping. I just dialed in these min and max values for both of the velocity mapping so that when I play the kick softly, get that little r rise of timbre, uh, getting a little brighter, swelling in, and then as I play harder, we get into that percussive territory. Pretty cool. So we have several other things at our disposal as inputs to use for these mappings. Random is just going to generate a new value every time it receives a MIDI note, which is really super useful. The incremental is extremely useful as well. It will increment the output value every time you send a MIDI note and then repeat. Let's map this to the tone knob. And we have to give it an amount. I'm pretty sure what's going on here is that this is the amount the value will jump. So if you give it a pretty high value. Sort of like a stepped sequence. So we've already taken this pretty far, but we haven't even used any CCs. Just to re reiterate, a MIDI CC is what you make when you add a knob here and give it a number. So let's go ahead and give that a one. And if you didn't know, one, CC1 is usually the mod wheel. We'll just do a velocity assignment. So that's now we're sending mod wheel CC1 out with velocity from our kick. And so now I could create another assignment, select the input as mod wheel. And no surprise, it looks exactly like the velocity inputs. We're just sending it via, via, via CC1. So we could use mod wheel as the input to do the same thing. Although I have really grown to appreciate using this to modify my velocity input. I find the XY graph to be very intuitive. So this is already a lot more interesting and expressive. Let's get another element going on here. So what I was thinking here on this track is that I would have a sequence of notes going. Just playing this. Another instance of operator. And I was intending on using my mesh tom here to control things about that new synth with the, the, the sequence. But I wasn't thinking of playing it directly. So for that reason, I have no, oops, no MIDI notes enabled to output from this tom. However, we'll go crazy with some CCs. Let's just get an, a CC1 rockin' just to illustrate that example. Do the, the classic, put velocity on it. So here's a cheat sheet for the relevant CCs that we can use with expression control. We already talked about CC1 being the mod wheel, so we could select mod wheel and do a mapping with that. CC11 is expression, which is another option here. And CC64 is sustain. So those three we can use as just straight CCs from sensory percussion to control things. So in order to do that, I would go here, have CC1 there, add two more, make one of those 11 and the other one 64. Woo. And then we could create mappings to those. We'll do that in a second. So for now, let's just use the mod wheel to control something like the decay time. So right now the decay is pretty long. If I play short, <laughs> it goes all the way down to one millisecond. So it's just clicks basically. And if I play a little harder, now we have a really snappy decay, a little longer and quite long. Another thing that would be interesting to use here is utilize the rise and fall times. I like that these are separate controls.
since making those changes happen over time with smoothing is a cool way to extend the expressivity that we're putting out from sensory percussion. I could definitely keep doing that for a long time. But let's keep moving. Let's do another mapping, maybe with the CC11. I have it set up to be expression here. I think something that would be kind of magical would be to use the speed controller. And we'll make this come from the whole kit. Oh, nice. I already have it set up. Map that to CC11. This is one of my favorite tricks to do with speed controllers to bring that sensitivity right up in the middle so that basically it only responds to a buzz. It'll just snap up really quick and go back down. This really comes to life when we utilize that separate rise and fall here. What I'm thinking is just using it to send a splash of something oh yeah so then it's kind of like an envelope envelope let's map that to the attack time see what we're looking at down a little bit so if I just play really fast with my fingers on the snare drum it almost sounds like it's uh, in reverb or it's in reverse 